Happy Thanksgiving, book lovers. It's Robert Boyd coming at you with yet another book report. And this one was on I Just Inhaled. It's called All Right, All Right, All Right. The Oral History of Richard Linklater's Dazed and Confused. And it is exact by Melissa Mares, I should say. And it is exactly what the subtitle promises. Uh, Mayers interviewed pretty much anyone who would talk, and there were a few important people who wouldn't for for a variety of reasons. Um, uh, Sean Andrews, who played Pickford, didn't. Um, Mila Jovovich, who played Michelle, didn't. And Lee Daniel, who was the uh, director of photography, didn't, although his brother, Bill Daniel, did. And more on that in a little bit. It's an oral history, so essentially it's composed of snippets of interviews conducted by the author. And she um, basically sliced them up and edited them all together to create a, uh, a narrative. And it's about this, this movie that uh, came out in 1993, and which I saw in the theater when it came out. Anyway, um, there, that's a whole genre of, of nonfiction books in the form of oral histories, sliced and diced interviews. Uh, I've read a few, and, and, and some of them are really good, like uh, Edie, American Girl, which was uh, compiled and interviewed by Gene Stein with uh, George Plimpton. Uh, Please Kill Me, and it was uh, the story of uh, Edie Sedgwick, who was uh, one of the uh, Warhol superstars. Please Kill Me uh, by Legs McNeil and Gillian McCain, an oral history of the New York City punk rock movement. And uh, McNeil had been, had a, had a ringside seat as, uh, as the uh, official mascot of a punk magazine. And uh, which, which, in fact, gave the whole thing its name. Um, I, I became aware of Linklater uh, when I was living in Seattle in the late 80s, early 90s. Um, and uh, there was an annual film festival, a Seattle film festival. And they, uh, you know, this was pre-internet. So the way you found out about these things is they printed up... Um, guides to what was playing and and they would insert them in the newspapers and everywhere and i can't remember where i picked it my my guide up but i went through and i just read through all the descriptions of all the movies without having any particular idea of which ones i wanted to go to and i saw slacker on on the bill and i i had no idea based on the the like one sentence description what it would be like and i suspect the the person who wrote that description really didn't know. And uh, the only thing that I knew was that it was set in Austin. Ugh, excuse me. And uh, I was I was from Houston. I was feeling a little homesick because I was, had moved to uh, Seattle. And I thought, well, that'll be interesting to see a movie set so close to home. That was literally the, the only reason I went to that particular movie of all the movies in the film festival. I saw, I saw several others that in that festival but when I went to see it I I was dazzled by its structure and um, the way it, it never focused on any one character or one story for more than a few minutes and um, I loved it and uh, when it was over uh, Richard Linklater who was you know now now he's an old guy like me um, but at the time he was, he was, he was in his twenties and he bounded up on stage and he, he was obviously energized by everyone's applause and people asked him some questions, including one that I thought in retrospect, I thought was a, um, was an astute, but not obvious question, which was, was he influenced by Eric Romer and he uh he 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 waffled on that but he said yeah yeah you know i love romer i've i've seen all his movies and so he said yeah it probably was influenced by romer but what what that told told me was that uh he was uh he wasn't like some punk rock kid he was somebody who had a deep knowledge of movies 
and that in fact if you read his biographies and in, in um in magazines or whatever that's really how he got his movie education was being uh part of a, a, a film society in Austin. He wasn't a, a, a film student or anything. And um, so I, I, I you know, filed that away as a great movie by a great filmmaker, and I knew I wanted to see more movies by him. And then uh, by 1993, when Days and Confused came out, I was living in uh, Portland, Oregon. And uh, when I heard about it, I said, okay, guys, let's go. I got, me and my friends all went and saw it at a theater downtown. And um, I was fucking blown away. I thought it was awesome. I loved it. And I, I've seen it many times on cable since. Um, and before I read this book, I rewatched it for, I don't know, probably the 10th time. Um, and, uh, you know, at the time I saw it in the theater you know, Matthew McConaughey and, uh, and, um, and, uh, Ben Affleck and so on, they weren't stars. They were nobody. In fact, I remember thinking after watching it that, uh, I thought Ben Affleck was kind of an asshole. You know, admittedly, in the movie, he played a dumb, a dumb, violent jock who enjoyed inflicting pain. So, uh, it was, a, he was a bully and, you know, it's a mistake to confuse an actor with the characters he plays. But, you know, I didn't really have anything else to go on. Um, and for years after that, I thought, oh, that guy's an asshole. But, you know, I had no real reason to think that except that my first impression of him was as an asshole. Um, like I said, they, they talk to pretty much everyone. And, uh, and it gets into the details of how this how the filming went, how it was like, kind of like a, um, all, all the actors were put up in a hotel in downtown Austin, uh, right near, uh, the, the, the river. And, um, they, they were all in their teens or, or early twenties. And it was like, it was like a college dorm situation. I mean, they partied like crazy and, uh, it sounds, it sounds fun in retrospect. And I think, uh, I think some of them, uh, you know, I think there were antipathies between some of them and, uh, and, and friendships. And so it had kind of a high school vibe. They, they formed cliques, so to speak. Um, the, uh, the biggest clique was, uh, Mila Jovovich and, and Sean Andrews, uh, who played Pickford because they, they were, uh, they were a couple uh, Andrews was in his 20s, and jo Jovovich was only 16, so that was kind of creepy, and, um, and, uh, Andrews apparently thought he was hot shit, he was going to be like the next big star, and he's really good in this movie. Hey, 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 hey man, aren't you a little bit early? Uh... Yeah, about an hour and a half, man. See, I want to get here by early, see if anyone's here. Man, I got this little action happening tonight, man, if you know what I mean. So I guess you got the wrong house. Oh. Yeah, inconvenience for you. I'm sorry. Uh, brought Mr. Pickford all together. Hey, these things happen. Don't worry about it. Ben? Yeah. But he's totally eclipsed by Matthew McConaughey, Whose whole part they they change they initially it was going to be a, ch a part with like two lines, and uh, McConaughey showed up and he he just was so magnetic and so funny that they kept expanding his role, and there's the famous scene at the end of the movie where uh, they uh, they a group of them go to uh, the football field to get stoned on the 50 yard line, and McConaughey has his big speech. Which I'm gonna show you right now. Man, it's the same bullshit they tried to pull in my day. You know, if it ain't that piece of paper, some other choice they're gonna try and make for you. You gotta do what Randall Pink Floyd wants to do, man. And let me tell you this the older you do get, the more rules are gonna try to get you to follow. <laughs> you just gotta keep living, man. L I V I N. So I, I've shown you uh, um, 
a Pickford clip. And Pickford was good in it, I thought. Or Andrews was good in it. And this is the famous uh, um, L-I-V-I-N clip. Um, so McConaughey, you know, was repla- replaced uh, Andrews for this scene. They They rewrote it because I think they decided McConaughey would be better. And it turned out that, that the reason McConaughey was good on this particular scene, I, I don't want to I don't want to psychoanalyze him, but I, that's what's what's implied in the uh, in the book is that during the filming, McConaughey's father died, which is insane. I mean, I how do you keep going? You're you're in a movie that you've got two lines in. How do you uh, how do you stay in? It's not it, it's not that important. You don't have a career yet. In his case, you know, he was he was a film student, so he wanted to be in movies, but he wanted to be a movie maker, not really a uh, actor. But he he was a, a trooper, and he kept on working, he kept showing up, and uh, and that just keep living speech, which he he improvised, um, seems to be like his philosophy about you know what to do when something happens. Like your dad dies in the middle of a movie that you're making, and that that kind of the the sense that you know tragedy happens at any time and you you kind of muscle through it, sort of a macho attitude. But I mention it because uh, Jason London had almost the exact same thing happen, but it was after the movie was over. So they had finished filming the movie, and almost immediately after that, London's uh um sister died in a car crash um london was the guy who played pink and so pink in the movie has this irrepressible optimism and i wonder if london would have been able to keep that up if uh his sister had died while he was making the movie as it was his career you know never really took off after that and i, I think part of it was because of a sense of i don't know guilt and depression maybe i don't know i, I again i don't want to psychoanalyze and the author, uh, Melissa Mares, doesn't psychoanalyze. She lets everyone speak for themselves. Um, if, if some of the actors and, and crewmen uh, and, uh, and so on psychoanalyze each other, that, that's a different thing. Um, but in any case, uh, mm-hmm. Jason London seemed like after that movie he could have been a star, but it never happened. Uh, Roy Cochrane, who played Slater, the... Um, the the stoner dude seemed like he could have been a star but he afterwards apparently he was offered nothing a string of rule roles as the stoner dude and he just didn't want to do that and i i can understand not wanting to be typecast and consequently he's had like a minor career the the ones who stayed in acting um of the ones who stayed in acting uh mila jovovich obviously has become a superstar and Matthew McConaughey and Ben Affleck and Parker Posey's become not, if not a superstar, at least a star in her, everyone knows who she is. And the rest of them, uh, uh, well, Joey Lauren Adams had a bit of an acting career after that. But, and Anthony Rapp, who, uh, plays Tony, one of the, uh, the journalism nerds, he had a, 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 a lengthy career, but he wasn't really a movie star. Um, I, after, after, uh, after Days and Confused, I saw him, uh, when he was, uh, in, um, uh, Rent. He was one of the guys in Rent. And I didn't know who he was or anything. I just saw him with my family on a, on a New York vacation. And now he's, uh, plays a guy who's in Star Trek. Um, and so he's, he's on a TV show and I, I see him, you know, every week. So, some of them have, have had successful careers, and some of some of them who seemed like they could have had successful careers really didn't go on to make a big mark on things. Like Michelle Burke Thomas, who played Jody, she she seemed like she could have been a star. Um, and, and you know, some of the younger ones didn't end up staying in acting. Um, they did a little bit like Wiley Wiggins, but, you know, they never, they didn't make it a career, and, uh, and that's fine, you know, 
a bunch of teenagers, and they literally, almost all of them were teenagers, except for the ones who were in their 20s. Um, you know, you, you, you're allowed to, like, not do this. And if you hit the jackpot like Matthew McConaughey did, um, you know, you become a star almost instantly. And McConaughey was the only one who really became kind of instantly famous and almost immediately started getting these starring roles. It took Ben Affleck a while after after this movie to really become the Ben Affleck we know now. Anyway, uh, there, there, one of the people interviewed in this, one of the people who wasn't interviewed was Lee Daniel, the, um, the cinematographer, the director of photography. He, he had done that for uh, Slacker and uh, Dazed and Confused. And I think he worked on some other uh, Richard Linklater movies. But you get the impression that he had a falling out. And you don't really find out why. But his brother, Bill Daniel, is interviewed. And when I was reading his, his interview, I kept thinking, is that the Bill Daniel I know, the photographer? So... Uh, after reading uh, the book, I, I sent him an email and I, and I said, "Hey, Bill, are you the guy who's who's uh, in this book? All right, all right, all right." And it turned out he was. And uh, I, I know Bill. And I have I have one of his f photographs, and I, I published some of his stuff in in my magazine, my one issue magazine, issue. And uh, I've been to his when he he, he used to live in a combination studio slash crash pad in a, a warehouse in Pasadena and I visited him, him there a few times and now he lives in New Braunfels but he's in the story he's he's in the book because he told uh, Linklater a story about he and his high school friend stealing a, uh, a Ronald McDonald statue and then painting it like uh, Gene Simmons from Kiss which uh, Linklater essentially imported whole hog into the um into the movie he he filmed this whole sequence where they steal and they, they they couldn't get permission to do a ronald mcdonald but they steal it like a couple of colonial uh you know figures who were statues in front of a bank and then they they paint their faces like uh paul stanley and gene simmons from kiss and then uh you know, apparently they the part of the story was that the cops were gonna you know bust someone for that, but they that they dropped that, and so the the the, the statue bit appears briefly in the movie, and I'm gonna show a clip of that now. Yeah. Yeah. Whoa, nice tongue. Whoa, nice tongue. <laughs> Who painted them? Mostly Michelle. Ah. And that comes from Bill Daniel. I, Bill Daniel is a great photographer uh, and a great um, documenter of uh, the punk rock scene in uh, in Texas and on in in California. So anyway, that's uh, all right, all right, all right. Uh, and if you are a fan of the movie, you'll enjoy it. I enjoyed it. Um, it's 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 slight. It's, it's light reading, but uh, happy Thanksgiving.